Are you wanting to see the standard deviation above and below the average of your team for a specific test, or maybe for a single athlete over time? Well, in this Power BI for Sports Science tutorial, I'll show you how to create a standard deviation that's above and below an average. So let's get started. As always, if you're finding my videos for the first time, make sure you hit like and subscribe below, and also hit that notification bell icon so you're notified of future videos. So this week we're going to look at creating an average line and also a standard deviation above and below that line. So you can see the, uh, I guess, the spread of your athletes, or maybe the change in performance over time of an athlete, uh, and seeing if that is above or below what might be a standard change. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we want to create an average line. So at the moment here I've got a squat jump uh, and at the moment I'm just showing the athletes uh, for a single date. And this is just showing each athlete and what their uh, squat jump was on that day. So all we're going to need to do is we're going to create a new measure and we'll just call this average SJ and then we'll go equals. So I'm going to show you one way and one way you might think of is let's just go average and then put in our squat jump here. The only problem with this is because it's just a, a generic measure, what it's going to do is it's going to apply all the filters. So all your athletes and it's just going to show you the same thing. So what we need to do is we need to expand this and we're going to use a calculate. And then we also need to find all of the data that's being pulled into this visual. So if we add an extra step on the end, um, and it's not going to be all for this one, it's going to be all selected. So what that's going to do is just return all the rows that are selected in the visual. And then all we need to do is just put testing data inside that, and then close our brackets. And so there we have the average of every athlete in our visual. Let's just change a little bit of formatting, and I like to make these lines uh, dashed or dotted. I'm going to go dashed for the average, and I'm going to make sure the uh, color is a nice black, so it really stands out there. So there we have our average, and that's really simple to do. But now we want to get our standard deviation. So what we'll do is, because it's going to be very similar, and all we're going to do is change our average here, let's just take this measure here, and we'll go control and then let's create a new one and then we're going to go standard div sj equals this and all we're going to do is we're going to change average here to uh, one of our standard deviation uh, formulas here so we can use either of these uh, we can look and see which one gives a difference uh, we don't have much data here so we can say this is a sample so let's use that uh, and we're going to close and we're just going to go into here. Um, but if we were to add this here currently as a line, for example, I have uh, adjusted my um, my y-axis a little bit. So let's change this to zero. We'll see it's way down here. And that's what we expect. There's obviously going to be a really small value here. So what we need to do, I'm going to adjust this back, is we need to create... And in, in this scenario, I'll create separate measures for this. So let's go, uh, let's just go SD, SJ, positive, and we'll go equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, and we're going to pull in our average, and we're going to minus our standard deviation. Oops, sorry, this is our positive. We need to go plus. And then let's just copy that, because we're going to need two of these. Let's create another new measure. And we'll call this one minus, put in a minus there. And so now if we add these uh, as line values here, so if we put our positive and we put our negative there, we can see that we've got above and below. And let's just change our colors here. So let's make it, um, we can make them black as well if you wanted, so that they're exactly the same. But then what we could do is we could change the uh, line type if we wanted. So we can go customize series 
and for SD we can change it to dotted. So it looks a little bit different. And there we have our standard deviation above and below. Now you're probably wondering, does this work with just a single athlete? So now looking at this kind of view is helpful to see uh, where athletes are either well above what might be an average range or where they might be well below. And that shows you that quite clearly there, they're below that standard deviation. So these guys probably have a little bit of work to do to get above into this and these have a, don't have anything to do because obviously they're better than. Um, but what you might want to do is you might want to use this over time to see how is an athlete tracking over time. So I have a date filter here, I'm just going to remove that and then I'll click on my visual and in our athlete here what we'll, we can do is we need to do two things, just change our axis. So let's change this to a date and we need to change this to date and you'll see there's only four dates here that have values and then what we will need to do is we need to add an athlete here to our filter. I'm not going to use a slicer, I'm just going to use athlete. So now when we select a specific athlete, we also get the exact same view. Because our measure is using everything that's selected within the view rather than all of the data that exists in our table. So even if we select different athletes, we get the same thing. So we get to see, say, this first uh, jump of this athlete, of athlete 10, was below the standard deviation here. And then these ones here were all within it. This one was maybe just above, yeah, just above what it was. Uh, so one thing often that you'll use to try and see if there is a change, and it's the smallest worthwhile change generally is what you look for, is you might look to say, uh, change this here in our measure and say you only want to use 0.2 of it, for example. I only want to see if it's anything outside of that. And as you can already see there, there's less of a size. So let's change the size of our, our y-axis. Oops. And let's just say put this to like, let's say just go to 24 for this view. And you can see there that change is a lot smaller. So anything that's a little bit outside of that, you're going to see. But say you, maybe you want this to be a little bit bigger, and let's say it's more of a moderate change. So let's go 0.6 and uh, 0 0.6 here as well. Oops, forgot my times. So now we add those there, and you can see that there are, out of this, there's only one that's more of a moderate change here. But what this might be useful for, rather than just necessarily this over time. It might be when you're looking at jump data, for example, to try and identify fatigue or anything like that within, ath within an athlete, and you're measuring this weekly or quite often, uh, you can see the changes that are occurring week to week. Um, and you could have this value over everything that's selected, or you might have this over everything in all time. And if you did everything for all time, that's where you'd have to change your measure slightly, and you would adjust uh, you're all selected to being an all value, but you'd be wanting to make sure that you still had uh, your selected athlete, and so you'd have to add either a extra uh, value here on the end, and it would just be, say, for example, um, athlete table athlete equals, and if we were to do underscore athlete, for example, we could create a variable here and go variable underscore athlete, equals a selected value and oops I didn't get that selected value from your athlete table and return that and it would be something like that to be able to get all of the data which would pull in everything from all time if you had more than obviously the four dates that I'm showing here I'm just going to close that so it doesn't change anything um, but there you go is an easy way of showing your standard deviation above and below uh, your average for a selected group of data or a selected period of data. I hope you found this video really useful and I hope it will help you to power for your performance through data. See you next time.